How's it going? Looks like it's gonna be pretty nice day here in UK as today. But I know it's gonna be busy. I'm working on some HubSpot stuff. <clears throat> Don't really like working on stuff like this, but here we are. <laughs> Sometimes you have to. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, just made myself coffee as well. Um, but anyways, let's talk about uh, programming as always. <laughs> So here's a question for you guys. When you guys were like, when did you guys join a company, or when, or when you're uh, exploring a new code base, uh, being assigned a project, uh, or whatever, you know, wherever you're you're working, maybe you're working for a company for two years, three years, I don't know. Um, what sort of code base do you guys observe? And this is mostly for programmer programmers, not really for the dev DevOps guys. But what sort of code base do you guys observe? Like, what what do you see when you look at the code base? Is it mostly procedural? Is it like long scripts? I think something um, like uh, you have in 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 Java. Is this something uh, um, <clears throat> um, that's very common in Python? Just a lot of functions. Is it uh, um, purely functional programming? What sort of what sort of code base do you guys work? Because my observation with with this particular one, which is object oriented programming, is that. Uh, um, there's a lot of talk, you know, there's a lot of talk. The, the funny thing is that people who actually are not in the industry, they're not constantly working on, on things, um, have a lot of, have, they seem to have a lot of opinions, you know, and I tell you what, having a lot of opinion is totally fine, but what's not fine is, uh, is literally sh shouting out loud and then telling the whole world that this is the best way to work, this is the best way to work, and then this is the best tool, you know. There's no such thing as best tool or best way to work. It depends on the company, you know. You could be doing object oriented uh, on one company, and then you go to the second company. It's mostly a script, so it, it depends, you know. But on object oriented programming, people shout, s scream, cry a lot. Like how object oriented programming is just dying. It's and my opinion is that it's not dying at all, you know. It's not dying at all at all because look at it this way: if you if you're if you're a programmer today, yeah. Um. Maybe you you started a junior developer, then you became a mid level dev, maybe senior dev, and then above that maybe leads at some point, and then maybe you're a CTO now. And then if you're a CTO or, or a lead, maybe mostly a CTO, maybe together, I don't know. Um, you guys are gonna decide what what tech stacks people are gonna people are gonna use, what style of programming they're gonna use, you know. That what sort of um, how how the team's gonna write code. You know what's considered clean, you know, and so a lot of the people that I speak at higher up, um, the older guys and people who manage the teams and all that, they tell me, um, at least <laughs> maybe it's just me, but they do prefer object oriented programming. They do prefer these UML diagrams, you know, and I don't know why that is, but that's the case. Okay. When you're working on a large code base, uh, isolating things, you know, making making classes and then separating things, ma making it make sense to you at a broad level, um, putting the, the code base in classes and all that makes a lot more sense when you're working on a really large code base. It, it becomes kind of easy to organize. But yeah, I tell you what as well, though, it's. It's very easy to over engineer when you're dealing with object oriented programming, but at the market level, uh, in, in the eyes of CTOs or lead developers, you have to know object oriented programming and you have to be able to work with it, you know? So you have to know basic things, you know, like completely basic th things like um, what's a factory pattern? Um, um, what are, what's the difference between an object and a class? Pretty basic, everyone should know. Um, uh, What's the uh, sort of what, what's the what's the term for that? Uh, um, the access level, uh, whether whether you keep the where the function private, protected, or or uh, or public. The, what what that means in you know in bigger context, how that helps uh, inheritance. Uh, you know, what what's the general concept and fuss about abstracting abstracting the functions classes? You know, all all this stuff is really really helpful when you're working on an existing project that's already object oriented, which a lot of the projects are a lot of the big companies um, that I have interviewed with a lot of the big companies that I've worked for they all use object oriented programming all of them you know all of them 10 out of 10 and then you have people on Twitter and stuff telling you 
uh, object oriented is dead, PHP is dead, WordPress is dead, it's all rubbish. Um, but then, <laughs> welcome to reality. On that side of the fence, things, things are different, you know? You have people uh, totally absorbing object oriented programming, completely doing everything in objects. Uh, maybe they'll create helper functions there and there, but it's mostly the whole architecture gen in general is objects and, and classes and all these sort of stuff. And if you can't work on it because you've been told by some TikToker guy oh, object oriented that you don't need to learn, then you go to the interviews, you fail. Even worse, even, you know, you join the company and then you can't work with it um, and your quality of your code is rubbish because you're used to working um, with procedure code and you never bothered to learn, then you're fired, right? So object oriented, I don't know, let me know what you guys think. At least from my from my point of view, the job market demands object oriented programming. People who are actually in the industry, they know object oriented programming really well and they can use it, not just um, creating objects and they just randomly creating things, just thinking through, you know? And I, I think the, the best way to learn object oriented programming is to actually create packages and all that so other people can use it. Even kidding, you can use them yourself, but yeah, I don't know what you guys think. Let me know in, in the comments. Do you think object-oriented programming is worth the time to learn? Do you think it's popular? Um, or do you think these TikToker guys are right? Let me know.